بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اللهم ترحم على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد كما ترحمت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اللهم تحنن على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد كما تحننت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اللهم يا رب وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد كما سلمت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد مولا يا صلي وسلم دائما ابدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم Dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Before we start the, uh, uh, before I start my talk, I would just like us to uh, settle down for a bit with the uh, quiet remembrance and the meditation that we normally do to start the day. The dhikr of pass and fas in the way of our chishti tariqa. The dhikr of the heart, dhikr qalbi. And then the meditation of the witness of Allah. And finally the meditation of supplication. We start with the pass and fas. And it is such a simple form of remembrance. It is such a useful way of being aware and being awake and being present, namely guarding your breath. Whenever you inhale, you think Allah. When you in exhale, you think who? Allah who. With every breath, basically, you, you are remembering Allah. So do this for a few minutes. With every inhalation, you think the word Allah. And with every exhalation, you think the word who, in this context, meaning more or less is. Focus on a point somewhere below your left nipple on the left hand side of the chest, which is the focusing point of the spiritual faculty of the qalb, of the, what we can call the heart. So without making any words, without forming any words with your tongue, just try to focus on your breath, breathe completely normally, in your usual way, sit comfortably. But with every inhalation, you think the word Allah. With every exhalation, you think the word who? Allah who?
Allahu. Now envisage that with every beat your heart is uttering the holy name Allah. Urge your heart to with every beat utter the holy name of Allah. Allah, Allah, Allah. Again, do not form any words with your mouth. Just think that your heart with every beat is saying Allah, Allah, Allah. Allah. Now for the meditation of the withness of Allah, of the mahiya of Allah, the fact that Allah is always with you wherever you are. Wahua ma'akum aina ma'kuntum. Pondering over the words or the phrases, Allahu hadiri, Allah is present. Allahu nadiri, Allah watches me, Allah sees me. Allahu ma'i, Allah is with me. Try to remove every other thought except the awareness of the fact that Allah is with you. Allahu Hadiri. Allahu Nadiri. Allahu Ma'i.
Now finally, the meditation of supplication, without again uttering any words, without forming any words with your mouth or your tongue, from the bottom of your heart, send up a wordless prayer to Allah, to God, for whatever you want and desire, for yourself, for others, for this life and the next. Ya Allah. صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا 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 بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Last night when most of us maybe were not most of us were present here now were maybe not present I started my talk by reading a surah from the Quran and I was thinking I'd repeat that because I think it is very pertinent and very topical to the subject of this retreat and to what we have been talking about and will be hopefully talking about during this retreat and that is surah Al-Duha, the morning light. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani r-rajim. Bismillahi r-Rahmani r-Rahim. Wal-Duha, by the morning hours. This is Pictol's translation. Last night I was reading from Assad's translation. We get the different flavors. By the morning hours, what duha? The duha really is the morning light. It's the, the, the bright sunlight of the forenoon, before the hor, before the middle of the day, the first half of the day, that light, which is bright, which is very useful, which keeps you awake, which kind of demands activity or it is very suitable for activity. That is the best time of the day to perform worldly tasks. You know, you have more baraka, more blessings, more, you get more done in those hours than in the afternoon or some other time of day. So this ideal time for being indulged in activities that demand concentration. Uh, that's for the beta mind, basically. <laughs> The beta mind light, the doha, the morning. Wallayli idha saja, and by the night when it is stillest, in the stillness of the night, the absolute opposite of the busyness of the morning is the stillness of the night. Peaceful, still, 
close to zero activity. I suppose we are between theta and delta in the awareness scale. مَا وَدَّعَكَ رَبُّكَ وَمَا قَلَى وَمَا قَلَى Your Lord has not forsaken you, nor does he hate you. I'm slightly modernizing the very archaic English here. Your Lord has not forsaken you, nor has he, nor does he hate you. I, I mentioned last night about the background of the surah. This came after Fatrat al-Wahi, when for after revealing his first revelation, the Prophet ﷺ for many years did not receive another revelation. And it was so hard upon him. This, after having experienced this amazing nearness and the unimaginable uh, spiritual experience of receiving revelation, then nothing. And now comes Waduha as a consolation for the Prophet, preparing him for the task that is going to be given to him in Surat al mudathir in Surat al muzammil So your Lord has not forsaken you, nor does he hate you. He's not that, that's not the reason that there was a break in the process of revelation. It's not because you did something wrong or you, know, you were not worthy of the revelation or anything like that. You know, don't, don't worry, it's fine. Don't go and ponder over, oh, why was it like this? Or why, did Allah, why, why, why is Allah silent now? You know, I don't hear what I heard. I don't get the signals that I used to get. What's wrong? What have I done wrong? No. Chill out, basically. Well, And verily, the latter portion will be better for you than the former. And we're talking about time now. The times that are coming will be better than the ones that have been. So basically those, these two verses is similar to the verses in the Quran. La takhafu wa la tahzanu comes in many places. La khawfun alayhim wa lahum yahzanun in many places in the Quran Allah is uh, saying that the people who have faith, they have no cause for regret or sorrow, which is an effect of regret. Neither will they have fear. So no worry about that which has been. No, I wasn't angry with you. I haven't left you nor with that which is going to come. What's coming is better than that which was. So it's the same. And verily, your Lord will give unto you so that you will be content. Everything you need and everything you want will be given to you in due time. You will be pleased. Remembering this, uh, I was talking about some advice given by uh, this uh, woman who was embarking on a sailing trip talking about preparing for the turbulent times, uh, staying calm in the turbulent world. Uh, and you cannot really tell from the advice that it's about sailing, it's just about life, you know, about this whole journey of our life, really. <coughs> but the context was sailing. And she talked about this uh, amazing character in this rather wonderful film, uh, what's the film called now? The Marigold Hotel. Can you <coughs> help me with the the the? Uh, I'll get it up for you here in one minute. Uh, 
the best exotic marigold hotel. I hope you've seen it. If you haven't, then watch it. It's worth watching, really, if you are into that sort of thing. I mean, if you, if you watch movies at all, this is one to watch. Family film, really. Very, uh, very sweet, very feel good. Especially encouraging for us who are feeling that better part of our youth is behind us. <coughs> Here, the main character in the movie, which is the hotel manager, Patel, he says, He's trying to create this fantastic hotel, and he's succeeding in his own particular, in his own peculiar way. But he says at one stage, everything will be all right in the end. If it's not all right, it's not yet the end. So if it's not all right, you know this is not the end. <laughs> it's still going to be all right. So this is again, Allah will give you, Allah will please you. You will get what you need, you will get what you want what you desire. Not maybe exactly when you want, but you will get it. Sofa in Arabic, not something you sit on, it's sofa, is something you sit on. Sofa is a term that denotes later, to put a, a verb into the future tense. But there are two Prefixes commonly used in Arabic for this. You don't really need either. You, you, you can, uh, this uh, form, this verb form is used for both present and future tense. But if you want to specify future tense, you use one of either two prefixes, sa or sofa. And sa is for the immediate future, and sofa is for the later future. So it, it denotes the meaning of in due time. So, Allah sawfa yu'tika rabbuka. Yeah, in time, your Lord will give you. you know, don't expect it today. Maybe not even tomorrow, you know. Maybe the day after, or next week, or next month, or next year, or next life. You know, but it will come. And then, this, what I said, was a consolation, really, or a proof that things are this way. If you don't feel confident, if, you don't, if it's not enough for you that Allah is telling you that things will be all right and that the times to come will be better than those that were, just look back at your own experience. You were an orphan, but he took care of you. Did he not find you an orphan and protect you? Your father was dead when you were born. Your mother died when you were still very small. But you didn't get lost in the desert. You didn't starve to death. You were not deprived of an upbringing. God pre 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 provided for you in the best way. And he prepared you for the life that was to come for you. And they did not find you wandering and direct you. You, you were lost. And Allah gave you direction, guided you. You didn't know what to do, and Allah inspired in you what to do. Did he not find you destitute and enrich you? Make you rich. You were poor, you were destitute, you had nothing. Allah gave you everything you needed, provided for you in material ways. And spiritual ways, of course. This is a consolation, and this is also what comes now, an exhortation. When things are like this, when Allah has cared for you in these ways, then you should also look to caring for others in this way. So when you see orphans, don't be harsh with them. Therefore, the orphan oppress not. Don't oppress the orphan. Taqhar doesn't really mean oppress. It means just be, don't be hard upon the orphan. Be soft. Just like you were being treated well as an orphan, 
to then treat others. We are inundated, really, with orphans here. We may think of orphanages in other countries, but we are so many orphans here in real terms and maybe in a manner of speaking. But just all those children who come here alone without parents, they are orphans now. They may have parents somewhere, maybe they don't even know where they are. Certainly the parents are not able to provide for them or take care of them or give them what they need. So these are orphans as well. Don't be harsh with them. Don't throw them out. Don't blame them for all that is going wrong in society. Care for them. Just like Allah cared for you. Therefore the beggar drive not away. Again, we see this here among us in a way never really previously experienced, at least not for many, many, many years. People begging in the streets. Don't deny them. Don't drive them away. Don't establish bylaws that make their activities illegal. Care for them. Why are they begging? And if you remove the source of their begging, they will not, you will, don't have to see them begging anymore. And therefore, of the bounty of your Lord, or let the bounty of your Lord be your discourse. Hadith bi ni'mati rabbik. Talk about the blessings that you have been given. Don't hide them. No. Let them show, both in your actions and in your talks. Don't complain. Oh, we are so poor. Oh, we are so uh, deprived and deprivated. Oh, we are so uh, chastised. Oh, everyone is blaming us. Oh, everyone is, no one is giving us our rights. Oh, this or oh, that. No, we have been given so much. Allah has given us guidance. Allah has given us a heart. Allah has given us vision. Allah has given us hearing. Allah has given us minds. Allah has given us everything we need and more. And he has blessed us with faith. He has blessed us with a way. He has blessed us with innumerable gifts. So talk about them. Don't talk about what you haven't been given. Talk about what you have been given. Don't try to make people feel sorry for you. Rather, try to make people feel happy for you. you know, and let that joy rub off unto others. Hadith bin Amati Rabbik. Tell people about what you have been given, about the blessing. Be pleased with what you have been given. Realize and try to see the value in that which you have been given and also convey it to others. Show it. That we'll have to do. We'll take a short break and be here and ready with full presence and concentration at 12 o'clock sharp. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa